March 12th. It's about a little past 8 a.m. And I am headed up to the Kendall Valley Lodge up near the Green River Lakes area because I signed up for the Drift 100. I don't know what I was thinking. So this is a 100 mile race. You can either compete on a fat bike or on cross country skis. Or if you're really crazy, you can run it. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Well, hopefully I'll get some good footage and be able to share my story with everybody. My goal is to finish. My second goal, actually I, sh I should switch that. My, my first goal is to survive. My second goal is to finish. And I'm hoping to finish between maybe the 25 and 30 hour mark. Uh, I'm supposed to bring, or I mean I brought, like a sleeping bag and a sleeping pad and a bivy in case I need to sleep for a little bit. But my goal is not to sleep at all. I want to be able to just ride all the way through the night. I feel like if my body's feeling good that I'll just keep pushing through. Um, if I start to get a little drowsy or crazy or not making good decisions, then maybe I'll, I'll stop and rest for a few hours. But ultimately, I want to just be able to to ride the whole thing, take a few breaks here and there, but not have to stop. So anyway, that's where I'm headed right now. You can't really beat the views today, that's for sure. Alright, I'm here with my buddy Tim. How far are we into this? About half a mile? Uh, not far. Not far, just starting. It's uh, pretty cold. My car said zero degrees when I pulled up to the parking lot. It's probably a little warmer than that now. It's sitting at two degrees right now. You have a whopping two. Trails like concrete, which is awesome right now. Good speed. I put a lot of pressure in my tires. I figured it's always easier to let it out than put it in. and I figured it'd be pretty hard packed to start. It softens up, I'll let some out later, but right now we're cruising. It's good. Any words of wisdom? Oh. Head down and keep pedaling. Head down, keep pedaling. There you go. It's about five or six miles in. Taking this left hand turn towards Union Pass, Fish Creek, Mosquito Lake. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Toes are still a little cold. Other than that, pretty good. Oh man. Yeah, this is a climb. So my bike's weighing in at 63 pounds. And you can feel it on the climbs. Woo! Slow and steady. Woo! Feel it burn. Yeah, I think if you win, just get to brag about. You say I'm the best. I survived the shortest amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> or did the guy last year? You like actually really get to brag. Is your bike carbon? Oh no. I mean, there were a lot of carbon bikes in the parking lot, though. Yeah. It's not in my price range. Yeah. Someone has specialized that bike. It looks really expensive. Got a Trek 45 aluminum. Yep. And then half my gear is Amazon specials. Yep, that's in my this too. Oh, in my ponies. Yep. 
That view is unreal. Just around mile 13, the last couple of miles has been just a slight uphill, gradual uphill. But I tell you what, I'm bonking a little bit. So I had Tim go on ahead. He's making pretty good time. There's no sense for him slowing down for me. Whew. But about 12 miles from the strawberry aid station I can get there probably the next couple hours get some food in me relax my feet for a few minutes and we'll push on to the next one hundred miles is a long ways Just gonna coast here for a little bit. Give my backside a break from sitting on this seat. So I'm getting some slight cramps in my calves, which is a little concerning. I can get a little more water and I've got some banana type food that I'll eat and see if that doesn't help a little bit. But hopefully they don't become a big problem. I'll have to keep an eye on that. So probably about 16 or 17 miles in. And time wise, it's about noon, so we've been going for about three hours. Banana, Nutella, tortilla. Tell you what, 22 miles in, this is like gourmet. Tastes really good. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm hungry right now. Can't wait to see what they have at the aid station. So it's 1.53, I made it to the strawberry shelter. Um, once we got here, they have these nice meals that they just warm up in hot water. Just awesome. Looking forward to that. And they had Pepsi. Ooh, man, I was actually craving a Pepsi. So it's like a wish come true. There's a nice little shelter here. It's got some picnic tables, little wood stove. I'll probably spend about a half hour here and then get back on the trail. From what I understand, the next 25 miles is like the most challenging, which at this stage of the race is not super encouraging, but if I can battle through that and get to Sheridan, then I'll be feeling pretty good. It's 2.30, I'm pulling out from the strawberry shelter. So I think I got about a five mile ride and then I gotta take a hard left. Another mile, and I'm kind of about three miles of snowmobile trail rather than groom trail. And there's some climbing to do, so I think I'm gonna pick up about 
3,000 feet of elevation, which I'm not looking forward to. So I'll be honest, I was ready to stop before I got to that aid station. I was thinking, man, I could just turn around here, head back, call it a 50 miler, and be done. But, you know, that stop, that food, that break was a much needed mental rejuvenation for me. So now I'm committed. I'm headed to the Sheridan, which is about 50 miles into the race. At this point, if I was to back out, I have to pay $200 for them to haul me out on a snow machine. Well, I don't got $200. So, I'm kind of committed. I got 20, 20 in my car. That's it. So, I have no option but to finish, right? So there's my motivation. with all these ruts in them. open here. I'm mostly through that section. I do not like that section. Man, so it's all downhill, but it's just so uneven because of all the snowmobiles. And it makes it really challenging to get through. You just see all the different tracks. So yeah, I could do without that section. Give me the nice groomed anytime. Unfortunately, I think now I gotta start climbing up this. I don't think I'm gonna like that section either. I've been pushing my bike for the last three quarters of a mile uphill in the snow. Whew. My legs are exhausted right now. So I think I'm getting really close to being at the top of this hill. Rumor has it there's a nice view of the Tetons if it's a clear day, and it's a clear day. But I am kind of racing the sun. So it's just trying to go behind those trees behind me. Oh man, but yeah, that was, I think mile 34 to 35 is probably the worst mile on the course. And of course, everything leading up to that wasn't so bueno either. That was more like two miles of climbing out of that place. Holy crap, that's brutal. But nice and clear and open up here at the top. I'm hoping that just over there I can see the Grand Tetons. Well, there's your Tetons. It's 
about 3.30 in the morning. So just a little update of where I ended up. So it took me until about 10 o'clock to get to the Sheridan uh, aid station. That uh, section in between Strawberry and Sheridan is just brutal. There's lots of climbs that you just can't even ride your bike on. Um, so I just, man, I hiked a bike. I don't know how much, but... And then on the way down, there were some downhills as well, but the trail had been ridden by snowmobiles and everything else that uh, just it was really ruddy and like I, I biffed it once. It was just really hard to ride on the downhill. And so between the climbs and the the downhills, I was just exhausted. So by the time I got to the Sheridan aid station, um, you know, I grabbed some food and I warmed up. I was freezing at that point, um, got some water, and then I spent some time charging my devices. But I stayed at that station for probably uh, two hours and 45 minutes. Um, and then finally, I just decided to leave and get going down the road. Um, left about 12.45. About eight miles down the road, there's a another little safety shelter. And so that's where I'm at right now. Um, there was a person in here sleeping and um, they tried to start a fire in here, but they were not very successful with getting that going. So I just uh, took my jet boil and just cranked her up and uh, held it on the wood. There wasn't any kindling or any anything to get the fire started. So I just used my jet boil and um, held it on the wood until it uh, caught flame. And then I stoked the fire a little bit and closed it up. And that's where I'm at right now. So you can see I got the fireplace going. And uh, I've got my air mattress laid down and my down quilts. And so I'm just gonna sleep here till the sun comes up which I don't know what time that is, probably five or six, and then um, keep going. I was really originally going to go all the way to the Warm Springs um, station, which is about 17 miles from Sheridan, but I was just starting to get cold, and it was tough managing um, the sweat with the temperature, and I'd be fine for a little bit but then once I started to climb I'd start to sweat and then when I'd start to go downhill it'd just be too cold so I figured I'd just spend the night here and start again in the morning when the sun comes up and a little easier to stay warm but I'm exhausted man this is a, a brutal 100 mile ride I'm sure there's probably some that are easier than this this one's pretty tough So even when I warmed stuff up last night, the fire went out while I was sleeping and it actually stayed fairly cold in here. Like I was fine sleeping, but I thought my water would warm up. It had been frozen in a few of my bottles and it didn't. So I just poured it into my jet boil here and I'm heating it up over the stove so I can pour it back into my water bottles so it doesn't have any ice in it. And I'm, you know, drying out some of my other gear from sweat, but, uh, so I'm just going to get my water situation fixed and pack everything up and then I'm on the road at this point. And then, uh, we're going to get out, <coughs> get out of here. So I'm nine miles from, what's the next stop from Warm Springs. <coughs> and then it's about another 15 to Strawberry. And then... About 18 miles to the parking lot to get out of here. Be done. Right now I'm pushing my bike up Union Pass. It's about a four mile push. It's pretty steep. Well, it's a good incline. This place is notorious. Now the wind's pushing in the back. It's actually helping me.
helping me up the hill a little bit. Once I get to the top of this pass, then we're mostly downhill. Getting close to halfway up. So the reports at the warm spring aid station was that it's probably between 20 and 25 below last night which I believe when I was going through that valley between Sheridan and that safety shelter it was pretty darn cold my water was frozen I was frozen that's the main reason I stopped. I wanted to get to the Wind River aid station, but I was only eight miles in, still had nine to go, and I knew I was probably going to be frozen by the time I got there. So I decided to play it safe. Glad I did. It's a good rest. I was able to thaw out my water and when you get to the warm springs aid station there's not really any shelter they just have a little tent so I would have had to just throw out my bivy and I'm pretty sure my stuff's not rated for negative 20 so I think I made the right decision All right, I think I finally made it to the top of Union Pass. So it's about four and a half miles. It took me about two and a half hours. I hope the downhill's glorious. Because I am neat. Whew, this is bad. So there was a snowmobile that went through here literally a minute ago. right now. I need to drop down to the other side of this mountain. 
gets blocked. I spent about an hour at the Strawberry Creek shelter. Got some food, got some soda. Warmed up a little. So, from there it's about 18 miles. I've already got about one and a half. made it. It's 8.01 on Saturday. That was a long journey. I don't think I've ever burnt that many calories before. So you finish here at the uh, Kindle Valley Lodge. They've got a little restaurant in there, but I am pooped. So I'm going to get my bike loaded, shuttle to my car, and call it a couple of days.